Praise be Jesus and Mary. Now and forever. Today we celebrate the memorial of the holy name of Jesus. Us Franciscans of the Immaculate still have actually the blessing to celebrate the memorial as a feast day. Because it was really the Franciscans who populated or the devotion, popularized the devotion to Jesus' name in the 15th century, especially through the preaching of the Italian doctor, the church, St. Bernardine of Siena. Bernardine, whose name means strong or brave as a bear, in case you were wondering. Shakespeare in Romeo and Juliet would say to us, what's in a name? But in reality, names are very important. Names are important and meaningful, essentially because life is important and meaningful. Catechism at number 2158 says, God calls each one of us by name. Everyone's name is sacred. The name is the icon of the person. It demands respect as a sign of the dignity of the one who bears it. When the Catechism says that the name is the icon of the person, the Greek word that's used in the New Testament there is spelled E-I-K-O-N, icon. It means image or likeness or portrait or living image. Colossians 1.15 says that Christ is the image. He's the icon of the invisible Father. So he's the living image of the invisible God. And a name is essentially a word portrait of who someone is. It's a word portrait of who that person really is. Names are so important that the first petition of the Lord's Prayer of the Our Father is that God's name be glorified. Right? We pray, hallowed be thy name. We pray that before we pray, thy kingdom come. Before we pray that God's will be done, we say, may your name be sanctified, O Lord. So it's the first petition of the Lord's Prayer. It's the second commandment of the Decalogue, right? You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Even to this day, religiously observant Jews don't pronounce God's name, which in Hebrew is Yahweh, because it's considered too holy even to speak it. Instead, they'll use words like Adonai, which means the Lord, or Hashem, which means simply the name I've called you by name, the Lord says to us through the prophet Isaiah 43, verse 1. And Jesus says in John 10, 3, that his sheep, quote, hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Again, your name is important and meaningful because you are important and meaningful in God's eyes. That's good news for all of us, essentially. Catechism even goes so far as to say in number, five, number 203 that a name expresses a person's essence and identity and the meaning of that person's life. So there's a lot more in a name than probably even Shakespeare realized. A name also personalizes someone, right? When you know someone's name, that man turns into Ryan or that woman or that girl turns into Wendy, they're no longer impersonal. They begin to be someone to us. Uh, driving through Spencer, driving on the road to Spencer nearby town, uh, you'll see on 46 the sign says population what, 2,207 or 2,217, right? Names turn those numbers into people. And likewise, even the reverse can happen too. For example, when someone is imprisoned, what do you get when you're in prison? You're given a number, right? So who you are essentially gets reduced in that sense. You become more of a number. You become depersonalized. The book of Revelation, Revelation 2:17, says that in heaven, we'll all be given a new name. A name written on a white stone which no one knows except him who receives it, says the Lord. So you're given a new name in heaven, not a new number. So it's not a prison up there. It's a paradise. 
To speak someone's name is to also invoke their presence. During exorcisms, exorcists say that praying the litany of the saints is very powerful. Why is that? Because invoking the name of the saints makes them present. And the demons freak out when they're in the presence of the saints, especially when Our Lady is invoked. We know God has a name that means that he's personal and he wants us to relate to him person to person. You'll hear some people talk about God impersonally calling him the deity or simply a higher power. It's very impersonal when you say those things. Uh, the more impersonal you are with God, a lot of times it means that you want to distance yourself from him. Or it means you don't really know him at all. It could mean both too. Even the term God is rather generic. The name Jesus is personal. Jesus means Yahweh is salvation or simply Savior. As we just heard in the gospel, when the angel spoke to Joseph in a dream, he said to him that Mary would bear a son, and you, Joseph, shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins, Matthew 1, 21. So not only did the angel give Joseph the child's name, but he also revealed what the name meant at the same time. There is salvation in no one else, says St. Peter, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved, Acts 4, 12. And it was St. Bernardine of Siena, as we mentioned earlier, who placed great emphasis on the name of Jesus and depicted the holy name, the IHS, superimposed on yellow rays, symbolizing Jesus as the Son of Righteousness, showering his grace and his light upon us. The IHS, which you'll see even on some of the chasubles that the priests wear, like the one I'm wearing now on the back, has the IHS. IHS is called the Christogram. It's the first three letters of Jesus' name in Greek essentially. So for the, reg the record, the Jesuits stole, or rather appropriated, the IHS from the Franciscans. I think we all know that here. I hope the rest of the world understands that too. If you transpose it into the Latin, IHS are the Latin initials for Jesus Ominum Salvator, Jesus Savior of Men. On the Eastern icons, You'll see the Christogram as well, but they have it in four letters on the icons. It's I-C-X-C. -C. Does Scripture say anything else about the name of Jesus? Well, we know the Lord himself says, If you ask anything of the Father, he will give it to you in my name, he says. Right, John 16, 23. It's quite a bold affirmation from Jesus when you think about it. Or how about St. Paul when he says God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father, Philippians 2 verses 9 through 11. Or again the Apostle in Colossians 3 17 says, Whatever you do in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. How about Jesus' own words again? He says, These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak in new tongues, they will pick up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick, and they will recover. Mark 16, verses 17 and 18. So the name of Jesus, very, very powerful. Don't neglect it. Don't abuse it either. St. Bernard of Clairvaux wrote, The name of Jesus is light and food and medicine. It is light when it is preached to us. It is food when we think upon it. It is medicine that soothes our pains when we invoke it. And the Catechism, lastly at number 2666, perhaps gives the best summary when it says this. It says, The name Jesus contains all, God and man and the whole economy of creation, 
and salvation. To pray Jesus is to invoke him and to call him within us. His name is the only one that contains the presence it signifies. Jesus is the risen one, and whoever invokes the name of Jesus is welcoming the Son of God who loved him and gave himself up for him, unquote. I could actually probably do a whole commentary just on that paragraph, but we'll save that maybe for another time, maybe next year, God willing. Let's ask Our Lady today for the grace to give her son's name the respect and the reverence that it deserves. Let's ask her also to help us remember to call on her son when we're in difficulty and when we're tempted and when we're in trouble, remembering and appropriating the words of the apostle who says everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Romans 10, 13. Praise be Jesus and Mary.